planted. <clears throat> it's been said that this incident led Tony to a new insight that changed the way that he prayed for the rest of his life. The insight is one that we can learn an important lesson from as well. And the insight was this, praying is like planting. Praying is like planting. The question becomes, do we have that kind of spiritual foresight? In essence, when we're praying, do we just pray the kinds of prayers that we're looking for, the immediate answers in our life or in our time? Or are we planting seeds in our prayers, laying out prayers for generations to come? Not so much thinking about what we're going to see or what we're going to read, but what will they read? <clears throat> How often do we pray for our children, and not only our children, but our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren, and our great-great-grandchildren? And you might say, why would I even be thinking about that? I'm not even close to that if we're younger. But why not? What a legacy to be praying for generations to come, laying them before the very throne of grace, asking God to bless them. We need to understand that when we pray, it is like planting seeds. Seeds that disappear for a time, but when then comes that time when they will bear fruit. And again, we might not live to see that fruit. But that's not what's important. Just like the farmer who has to wait patiently for the seed to come, the full fruition, so we too have to wait to see the answers to our prayers. And sometimes, again, that wait is short. Some seed sprouts up really fast. But some take a long time for them to come to full fruit. Are we willing to wait? We've said it before and we need to continue to say it because there's a lot of truth to it. We live in a day and time when we want things yesterday, if not quicker. Our meals are microwaved. Our banking is done with a picture on a smartphone. You don't even have to go into the bank. The internet allows us to communicate with others in all parts of the world in a matter of seconds. Now, there are probably some of you here this morning that can remember a day when communication by mail, when we talked about mail, took not only days, but sometimes weeks and maybe even sometimes months. Now, with email... We get agitated if we don't get an answer like that. And yeah, I'm even talking about myself. There's times when I email somebody, especially after they've emailed me, and I'm thinking, why aren't you getting back to me? Come on, it's been 45 seconds. Give me an answer. I like what the Circle Maker book says about thinking long. And that's what we're looking at this morning in this last phase of the circle maker. It says one dimension of thinking long is thinking different. And prayer is the key to both. Prayer doesn't just change circumstances. More important, it changes us. It doesn't just alter external realities. It alters internal realities. So that we can see with spiritual eyes. It enables us. To see beyond our circumstances, beyond ourselves, beyond time. And I firmly believe that this falls back to understanding what it means to wait on the Lord. To be one who understands what it means to persevere. The problem is, is that we're often not careful enough to wait and we can be like Peter, James, and, and John in the garden when Jesus went right before his arrest to pray. Remember what he asked them? He said, stay with me 
and just pray for a little while. And what did they do? They fell asleep. They fell asleep. And Jesus comes back to them and he finds them sleeping and he says to them, Friends, the Spirit's willing, I know, but the flesh is weak. You've got to hang in there with me. But you think about the words that he speaks to them and how true they are. Most of us, if not all of us, have willing spirits. Or at least we try to have one. But then it's the flesh that steps in and it gets in the way. What we need to understand is that the problem isn't so much the desire to do something, but rather the problem boils down to the lack of power, and more specifically, lack of willpower. It's been said that we live in a culture that overvalues 15 minutes of fame and undervalues lifelong faithfulness. Let me say that again. Hear those words. We live in a culture that overvalues 15 minutes of fame and undervalues, undervalues life long faithfulness. Just maybe we have it all backwards. Just as our great, greatest successes often come on the heels of great, our greatest failures, our greatest answers often come on the heels, it says, of our longest and what we would dub most boring prayers. What we need to realize is that if we will pray hard, and if we will pray long, persevere, our lives will be anything but boring. Now, it might not seem that way on this side, but we have to enter into that prayer that perseveres to find it. It's been said our lives will turn into a true spiritual adventure, an adventure that God has wanted for us from the very beginning. And this is the piece that I really like. It won't always get you where you want to go. It won't always get you to where you want to go. But the promise is it will definitely get you through. We need to hear that. It won't always get you where you want to go. But the promise is it will definitely get you through. You see, sometimes God will push us to our absolute limits. The limits of our faith. The limits of our patience. The limits of our gifts. But this is how He stretches our, our faith. This is how He builds our character. Even though at times we wish He could find an easier way to do it. He does it for our own good. The dilemma is that we will never find out until we try. And far too often, many people simply are not willing to invest the time and the energy. You see, they want the spiritual adventure. I like the sound of that. Come on, God, I like the sound of a spiritual adventure. Let's go. But are we willing to make the investment or pay, or maybe I should say, pray the price? It goes back to our desire for instantaneous answers, instantaneous insights, instantaneous direction. In his book, Mark says we pray what he dubs ASAP prayers, as soon as possible, Lord. As soon as possible. I need an answer now. I need an insight now. I need direction now. And the problem is, is that when they do not come ASAP, we tend to want to throw in the towel. We want to give up. lead ourselves to believe that God's not listening when nothing's further from the truth. 
When God doesn't answer ASAP, we get frustrated, we get tired. And maybe we even come to the place where we want to throw up our hands and say, what's the use? But Patterson in his book offers up an alternative, and it's this. He says, what would happen if we turned our ASAP prayers into ALAT prayers? As long as it takes. As long as it takes, Lord. Now we need to stop and think long, and we need to stop and think hard about that one. 